hello everybody and happy Friday. Welcome back to another episode of Find My Past Fridays Live. I got that's right, that's exactly yes. what it's called, Alex. Yes, for the ten first time ten. in weeks so I got the name right. Um, as usual, I'm your host, Alex Cox, and I'm joined off camera by Max Anderton, who is back again after, uh, uh, not a week off, you just had a day off, didn't you, to attend a wedding. That was weekend. right, yeah, weddings everywhere at the moment. Weddings everywhere, yes, uh, including my own, which is next Friday, which is why I will not be with you uh, next Friday. Uh, but do not fear, we have, uh, we will, we, we're not going to leave you hanging, we will have a broadcast of sorts uh, well, to keep well, you entertained. Chris Hang says, I uh, hope the wedding goes okay Alex, think Max do the session on his own next Friday. He can't, he's at my wedding. I'm going to the wedding. Of <laughs> um, Max is invited. We don't just pretend to be friends, we're friends in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we do actually have a very special broadcast lined up for next yes, week. Yes we do, we do. Um, because yeah, big thanks to everyone who tuned in last week for my solo performance um i had real fun doing it actually um and um but yeah so i think many of you will remember i mentioned our new collection of electoral registers index electoral registers which are an amazing sense census substitute for the 1930s if you didn't hear about it i recommend going back and watching last week's video because they're pretty cool but uh next week we have Estelle and George, who are from our search team, who are two of the masterminds behind this new collection. And we're going to get, as Max and I won't be here, we're going to get them to pre-record a little video explaining why this record collection is interesting and some of the work that went on to, to make this happen. And they'll also be in the comments asking any questions you have. So if you haven't searched electoral registers, might be worth having a play around beforehand and then you can get your questions in and get them answered by the pros. That's right, I just want to say hello, lots of hellos coming in. Hello to, um, oh, a new viewer here, uh, Annabelle Cartledge-Baxter. Hello, Annabelle. That is a fantastic name. It is indeed. Uh, hello to hello. Sharon Lyon or Leon. Um, and let's see, we've got a few questions coming in as well. So thanks for your questions. Keep them coming in. Yes, I'm going to send them do, over do, do, to do, Alex do. and he's going to get through as many as he possibly can. Yeah, I can. normally do my usual spiel at the start of these where I say, please get them in because that genuinely is why we're here. We're here for you to send your questions in and talk to each other as well as me just waffling on for 20 minutes. And so uh, actually one of our regular viewers, William Shaw, has said, um, wonder if you had a chance to look into my Ask the Expert question. William, you're on my notes. <laughs> William, uh, yes, I, I owe you an apology. I have indeed. I did receive your email. Uh, um, I only caught it after you reminded me on the Facebook comments last week. I've have been having a look at it this week and I am, I promise you with all my heart, I'm going to take a proper good look at it. And the same goes for Nick Hancock as well. Uh, Nick, if you're watching, Nick kindly yeah, sent Nick's in watching. his... Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Uh, Nick sent his grandfather's service records in and I've started having a look at them, but... I, basically, I, what I want to say to you both is I haven't forgotten. We are definitely going to be taking a look at these uh, in upcoming videos. And the only excuse we really have, and it, not that we should be making excuses, is that uh, it's quite a busy and exciting time at Fire My Pass, weddings aside. Because, uh, of course, we've got, uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming up DNA-wise in October. So we're, you know, we're, all, we're all working hard getting ready for that. And, of course, uh, November is the final remembrance weekend of the centenary period so of course we are also uh, planning lots of activity for that as well and also we've got lots of things scheduled in for our final last friday so we have next week as we said we have george yes and we do talking we do, we do. Roles. the week after that we have nico <coughs> much talked about scottish special yeah and the reason i did want to make a special mention about william and nick is because i i we i really want to encourage people to send stuff in and i don't want you thinking that you know once it's in we just ignore it we don't I've looked at both and we, we definitely will be covering them in future videos, so thanks again. And in a similar, similar vein, I also wanted to say uh, a big thanks to Phil Patrick as well, if Phil is watching. Uh, Phil tuned in last week when I actually asked for a few recommendations about things that you'd like to see us cover in future weeks. Uh, and Phil sent a really nice email in saying that, you know, his ancestors are from the same neck of the woods as mine. We both got Yorkshire ancestors, but uh, Phil said he'd quite like, he's had great success with genetic genealogy and would like, wondered whether we'd be interested in covering um, more about DNA testing and gene genetic genealogy in the future. Well, Phil, as I said to you in my reply, you are in luck because basically watch this space. We have, there's going to be a lot uh, of DNA What's the word? Material, content. Content. It's an awful oh, word, isn't it? I don't like it. It's such a bad word. It doesn't sound fun or exciting at all. Uh, but yeah. Very clinical, isn't it? Yeah. It, 
are, we are, we'll be getting more serious about our DNA service in October. You'll be hearing a lot more news then. So do watch this space because it's going to become a much more regular feature. And as I thought, as I just mentioned Remembrance then, as we're getting re rem uh, ready for Remembrance, I thought I'd do a bit of a public service, annou public service announcement. I don't know if that's the right word. A, a call for help. Uh, yeah, two totally different things. Two totally <laughs> different things, yeah. A bit like the Kitchener poster, Find My Past Needs You. So um, basically anyone who has uh, an, a, a, an interesting, well, they're all interesting, but if anyone has a particularly unusual or compelling World War I family history discovery, we're desperately on the lookout for user success stories in the run-up to November. So if you have had massive success using our World War I records, please do let us know and send them in because we'd, provided you'd be happy with it, we'd love to use your successes as a way of promoting what we do and encouraging other people to come online. Because obviously, seeing what other people have done it is the best way of getting people into family history. You know, most people, the reason most people aren't as passionate about it as we are is because they don't, they're not aware of how much information is out there and what's possible. So being able to say, look at this person here, in, in, in an afternoon they discovered this, 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 that, or, or during the course of their research they found a letter written by their ancestor, or a, dis, a, refer, a description of his character, all this stuff helps us make, you know, make family history more popular, um, which I think we all have a vested interest in doing. So yeah, please do share your um, remembrance well, your, your World War One stories with us. We would love to hear them. Um, also, yeah, if you're just joining us, hello, uh, welcome to Find My Past Fridays. Get your questions in. I'm going to pass them over to Alex. But Alex, I'm really desperate for you to uh, announce what our question of the week <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I've got something very exciting that I want to do. Oh, oh no, it's not a big surprise. Oh, Don't worry. I'm going to surprise. <laughs> oh, no, it's not like some kind of wrong. wedding surprise I'm going to do. Oh, good. Okay, do I need to introduce it in any special um, way? So you say, I don't know, how to, we didn't really rehearse this, did we? No, we so, didn't. so, what is this week's question of the week, Alex? What is this question of the week? Well, as I myself am getting married next Friday, and my, my, I've been totally immersed in all things weddings for the past probably six months, uh, we thought, as this is my last one before I go off, we'd make this week's question of the week about weddings. Uh, so basically, we want to know your stories about family history discoveries related to weddings. What have you found out about the weddings in your family history, in your family tree? Have you found anything unusual? Have you found anything surprising? Have you bizarre. found anything bizarre, particularly touching or particularly detailed? So, I mean, one of the examples I always use when I tell people that, that you know, the the uh, massive benefits of searching newspapers for family notices is a family notice I found for one of my ancestors' weddings in the 1880s. Uh, and it was one of my Yorkshire ancestors in a Yorkshire newspaper and it went into incredible detail. It told me the colour of the decorations and the table settings. It described the dress that my ancestor wore when she walked down the aisle and it listed off some of the guests. And you know that's far more information than I ever would find in a parish record or a civil register and it was really, you know, I almost felt like I was there reading through it. So along that line, did any of your ancestors elope? Did they go up to Gretna Green? Did they have a clandestine marriage? Yeah, we, we, we just want you to tell us about the, uh, the weddings of your ancestors. And then I want to say, and that is this week's question of the week. <laughs> Wow. Okay. That I was, can't that, see. That was Hollywood. <laughs> okay. I can't see know. this. So I'm going to have to take your word that it's as, as impressive as you're saying it is. I'm going to have to do it again in a bit, I think, because I loved it so much. Please <laughs> let us know if you loved our question of the week graphic there. Oh, well, uh, now, we, now we've wowed you with our impressive graphics. On to the announcements. Uh, well, the main announcement, the main thing I wanted to let everyone know is that we are having a free weekend this weekend. Yay! So pretty much everything on Find My Past is free to anyone who has registered an account. Um, so that's, it's, it's actually pretty, it's 2.7 billion records from around the world. Obviously, most of our records cover English speaking countries, but we do have others from, you know, more exotic locations. So that's 2.7 billion records. That's pretty much every category on the website. The only things it excludes are our newspapers, newspaper collections, the period, periodical source index, um, and our modern collection of electoral registers, which date from 2002 to 2018. So don't, when I say electoral registers, don't worry, the newly indexed ones, they're included. Um, but we're really excited about this, the record, because it just means people can, either people who haven't used Find My Past can, can start exploring it and see, you know, get, get an idea of everything we have to offer, or people who had had subscriptions and have kind of, you know, 
lapsed or gone away and are thinking about coming back. But it doesn't just apply to people who don't have subscriptions. People who are in starter or plus subscriptions will be able to have an explore of some of the records they normally wouldn't have access to because they fall under pro. And as a gesture of good faith, all those with pro subscriptions, just to make sure you don't miss out, we're adding three days of access onto your sub. So everyone everyone gets the benefit from this free that's weekend. Pro and World and all the equivalent premium Pro World, yeah, the top tier subs across all three, ter across all the, you know what I mean. Um, so, so we've got a question here, Debbie Lorraine saying, how do we join it? So, so how, do, how do you take advantage of it? Really simple, Debbie, all you need to do, actually we do have a landing page, which you will, landing page is another technical term, sorry, I shouldn't be using these. We have a dedicated free weekend page, uh, which is all designed to help you get started and it'll tell you exactly what the free weekend entails. Uh, we'll pop a link to that. I'll share that in the comments. Max yep. will share a link in the comments. But besides from that, it's really very simple. All you need to do is register an account on the site and all you need to do with that is pop in your name, email address and set a password. We don't need any financial information, we don't need any card details to register. That's all you need to do and you can you know, dive into the records. Um, if you don't have any plans, you can get a lot of researching done and you can actually, you know, you can make a bit of headway in, in, uh, in the course of a weekend if you, if you really put your mind to it. So yes, uh, if you haven't tried Find My Pass before, please do give our records a go while they're free. Free till, uh, let me just check the exact time. 10th is Monday, isn't it? I don't know. Uh, seven, yes, it is, yes. Yes, so they're free till midnight on Monday. So it's not just the weekend. You've got them free all of today, Saturday, Sunday, and then midnight on Monday. This is Brit British times, obviously. Uh, for those watching in the US and Australia, slight difference. Um, but. For those just joining us, can we repeat the question of the week? Because I want to show the graphics again, because Lynn Little said, what graphics? She must have blinked to miss them. Oh, and no, then someone Lynn. said, where's the confetti? There was a bit of confetti, but maybe we need to make it bigger for next time. So, Alex, can you please do me a favour and repeat this week's question of the week? This week's question of the week uh, is, tell us about your family history discoveries relating to marriages. What have you found out about your ancestor's marriage? It could be surprising, it could be shocking, it could be touching, it could be poignant, anything. We just want to hear about your ancestors' marriages, basically. Oh, I'm really disappointed this time it's not working for some reason. Oh, do I need to do it again? <laughs> no, you don't have to do it again. I'll figure out, oh, there's gremlins in the machine again. Those gremlins. Great, so with, with uh, free access out the way, and now you know the question of the week, um, before I talk to, uh, talk to you about this week's records, because this week's records do have quite a strong theme, they're all Scottish, um, and I didn't want to talk too much about Scottish family history in this week's broadcast. By the way, I'm just looping over your face now because it's working. Sorry, I'm really, really, <laughs> I'm really distracting you. I got so excited on my graphics. I will leave it now and let you actually talk. I'm sorry, everyone Thank watching. Thank you. That's all right. Um, yeah, I, I was saying, I, all this week's records are Scottish. Um, and I didn't want to talk about Scottish family history in too much detail this week because I, uh, we have the wonderful and fantastically knowledgeable Miko Cleland. Um, Coming on, what's the date of Miko's broadcast, Max? Uh, it's two weeks from today, so for the 21st. For the 21st. And if you, do, if you do have Scottish ancestors and you're curious about Scottish genealogy, that is not, that's one you're not going to want to miss because I always say this about Miko, but he really, I mean, to say he knows his stuff is an understatement. That you'll, you'll struggle to find people more knowledgeable about family history than the likes of Miko Cleland or Jen Baldwin. Um, and Scottish genealogy is a, an area that Miko is, v you know, very hot on. He has, you know, his surname, Cleland, as you can probably tell, he has many Scottish ancestors. And actually, he's responsible for the lot of, a lot of the Scottish records that are coming online at the moment because he's been heading up our licensing efforts in Scotland. So big thanks to Miko for all our Scottish records and be sure to tune in two weeks from now when he'll be taking a really, really deep dive and a very close look at Scottish genealogy and Scottish records. So before I went over the records, I wanted to do an On This Day. I haven't done one for a while and I like On This Days. Right, before you get to On This Day, there's going to a couple of really good responses to this week's question of the week. Um, or do you call it such a fan of marriage that was three days before the birth of the first child? Oh, oh, that's Shock. tight, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then also, yeah, Rose Driftmeyer said my paternal great great grandparents couldn't get married in a church because they were different Christian faiths. Oh wow! Well, I wonder what era that was. That must have been. Actually, it might not have even been that long ago. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know, Rose. When was that? Yeah, Rose, when was that? We'd love I to mean, know. I mean, great-great-grandparents, we can sort of guess. But oh, I I, sorry, I, I, didn't, I missed out the hit. Great-great-great. <laughs> yeah, we got a rough idea. Wow. Wow, 
Wow. Um, and also, uh, this is not related to the question week, but it's a very good question. And David asked, um, she said, I have accounts with Find My Past and the other website that we won't mention. <laughs> um, says, I need to close one. If I decide to close the other one, how do I transfer my extensive tree or do I have to do it all in person? Thank you. Jedcom. Jedcom, that's it. But the only <laughs> thing is, I'm, I can't remember whether you can download as Jedcom on Ancestry. I'm pretty certain you can. Oh, right. I just assumed Jedcom was the universal. I, it is, file. but I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I'm not I, as familiar as I should be with Ancestry's Family Tree Builder. But uh, on Far My Past's Family Tree, you can upload Jedcom files very easily. So if you are able to download your family tree as a Jedcom, you will be able to import it onto Far My Past with, with no problems whatsoever, and you'll start getting your hints pretty much immediately. So yeah, it should be very straightforward. Um, any others? Yeah, everyone's saying yes, you can. You can download a Jedcom. Yep. Oh, good. Thank you. That's why it's handy having everyone talking to each other. They can ask <laughs> yeah. the things I can't. Um, so yeah, on this day in history, I wanted to do two because I had a. I, I always have a look in the morning when I come in. I'm like, wow, what happened today? And they were two quite interesting ones, I thought. So uh, uh, and both of them were kind of on on opposite ends of the spectrum. One about new life and one about death. Uh, I'm getting a bit poetic here. Uh, so the first one is... Unfortunately, on this... I haven't got an on this day graphic yet, but don't worry, it'll come. It's coming. So on this day in 1888, Edith Eleanor McLean was, is, was the first baby in the history of humanity to be placed in an incubator at the State Emigrant Hospital on Wards Island, New York. So, and I think, have you got... A... So you should be able to see on uh, the screen here some, some pictures of very early incubators. Uh, we also found a sketch in our newspaper collection. And the reason I just thought this was, I'm, I was an incubator, incubator baby myself. So, um, you know, thanks to the medical pioneers who are treating Edith, because without that, I probably wouldn't be here today. Um, but the re when I was doing a little bit of reading about it in newspapers, I was just fascinated to see how genuinely fascinated the general public were with incubators because uh, obviously it was new technology so when baby Edith was born she was just two pounds and seven ounces and was placed in what they then called a hatching cradle it's quite creepy that name I think hatching cradle it does sound a little it's bit creepy, creepy, doesn't it yeah lizards, doesn't or like it? a spider not, not human, or something not, yeah or spiders um, so these hatching cradles were kept warm in much the same way as a bannery uh, and they used a 55 litre tank of hot water um, which you might have been able to see in the pictures. And to give you an idea of how fascinated the general public were with these hatching cradles, the World Fair in 1904 included an, a hatching, cra hatching cradle exhibit complete with live babies. That's a bit weird, isn't That it? is actually quite terrifying. As an exhibit, ex exhibit at the World Fair, you can go by and see all these babies. You know, they just took them out of the hospital and, oh, you know, bring them down, show them off to the crowds. Um, so that was one of the events on this day. And the second event, um, not that much later, was on this day in 1909, Frenchman Eugene Lefebvre became the first pilot in history to die in a powered airplane crash while testing a newly built French, uh, a newly French built right airplane, airplane, sorry, biplane, I should say, in France. Um, and the, so we've got an image of Eugene sitting in the cockpit looking incredibly dashing. And we also found a report from the Illustrated Sporting New, uh, Illustrating, uh, the Illustrated Sporting News from our collection of uh, British newspapers. And there you can see pictures of the plane that Eugene died in, and pictures of Eugene. And I was doing a bit of re reading about Eugene this morning, and he was uh, he was a real dashing figure because you know this really was the era of uh, you know those magnificent men and their flying machines, where they, these guys were you know basically rock stars. Uh, so he, 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 he was a man of first, not only was he, so sorry, I should, I should specify here. When I say he was the first pilot to die in a power, he wasn't the first person, he was the first pilot. So uh, the first person to die in an airplane crash was actually an American lieutenant named Thomas Ethold Selfridge, who died the year before, and he was a passenger rather than a pilot when they were testing a plane. For, it was a right, built, you know, a right aircraft again, and it was testing out whether, you know, what military capabilities it could have. Um, but Eugene was the first pilot to die. But he was also the first, one of the. He also participated in the first ever international air race, and he was also one of the first people, one of the first pilots in history to perform aerial stunts for a crowd. And I found this fantastic quote from him, a uh, quote about him in the newspapers. So I found this report uh, describing his flying stunts. It says, uh, "Lefebvre came diving down at the crowded tribunes, turned in the nick of time, went sailing off, swooped down again till he made the flags on the pillars and the plumes of the ladies' hats flutter, and so played." 
made about will for our applause. Uh, the article later went on to state that the judges were horrified by this display of excessive recklessness, and as a result, he was fined four dollars. So they, they, they took it seriously. Um, so yeah, those were the two anniversaries on this day. Oh, so. by the way, I've just realised I've had your face covered up all this time with this by Eugene. newspaper article. No, not by Eugene, by the newspaper article. So I'll get you back on screen. And also, the, the comments are coming in thick and fast, which is amazing to see. And I, so I've missed the name, but someone actually said that they are related to the surname Lefebvre. What, how do you say it? Oh, I've probably butchered it, but it's spelt. L-E-F-B-V-R-E. -E. Yeah, so someone in the comments said they've actually got that on their family tree. Oh, wow. I wonder if you, like, you, you may well be related to I Eugene I mean, it's quite himself. a distinct name, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. I wonder how common it is in France. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not quite as well, distinct Well, no, it's not, it's not a surname I've ever seen before. No, not me. So, wow, that's cool. Oh, thank you. So, um, great. So, well, as we've had loads of comments coming in, I won't, go, I won't spend much time on the records. I think I'll just... Yeah, so I've, I've actually answered or shouted out a few of them. If you look in your, the message I've been sent over, the bottom two here are fresh ones that I've sent over to you if you want to have a look at those. Uh, oh, and Williams just said it was Karen Harvey. So Karen Harvey is potentially related to our daredevil uh, but unlucky ah, pilot. Oh, wow, that'd be cool if you were, Karen. Um, actually, I'll quickly, so in terms of records, we've got 158,000 new records, newspaper articles for you to explore this weekend. And as I said, they're all, well, bar newspapers, all from Scotland. So we've got um, a Edinburgh Temperance Pledges, 1886 to 1908. Um, and this was a pledge introduced by the United Presbyterian Church. Uh, and it was originally called the Band of Hope Register. And it was basically people just you know signing a pledge to observe temperance and you know stay off stay off the stay off the drink the demon uh, drink the demon drink um, and according to the Scottish Genealogy Society who transcribed the pledge um, it's a, the original objective of the band of hope was to teach children the importance and principles of sobriety, sobriety and teetotalism and um, the, the index record you know it recorded names birth years addresses and it's actually interesting when you look at the birth years because you will see that quite a large portion of those signing the temperance pledge are actually children um, so it, it just goes to show, it's evidence of what the society was saying well, they were yet to uh, sample the delights of alcohol. <laughs> well, it was the it was the 1800s. Who knows? They <laughs> they could have been. They could, yeah. have been, they could have been on it already. Uh, we've also got a load of early censuses. So we've got a head of household sentence for Lady Kirk um, in 1811. We've got a census for St Cuthbert's in Edinburgh for 1790. We've also got one for the parish of Tingwall in the Shetland Islands. Tingwall. That sounds very Viking. There's a place on the Wirral where I grew up called Thingwall, and I think that's because that's only one letter difference. I was going to say, maybe someone misspelt one along the way. No, I, I apparently Thingwall was named because a thing was the Viking parliament, and that's where the, the Viking settlers used to meet up and discuss. Mm. So I imagine in Thingwall, Shetland Islands, very Norse, very a massive Norse presence there. So yeah, maybe, oh, wow, interesting. By the um, way, lots of people seem to have lots of information about the Lefebvre name. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. So Sylvia Valentine says it's a study by a member of the Surname Society. Um, and Audrey Collins says uh, Lefebvre was the name of the department store in Gillingham when she was growing up. <laughs> Kent is quite near France, I suppose. Yeah, it's not too <laughs> in far. In the grand scheme of things. Uh, it's not too far. So yeah, there you go. We've got all these early censuses. They primarily focus on the heads of household, you know, unlike modern censuses that, well, I say modern, more recent censuses that recorded everybody. Uh, but they'll, you know, they're, st they're very, still very useful um, and they'll, they'll give you, th you know, they will provide detail about the other inhabitants of those households. And, uh, you know, it's a reflection of the time, you know, when, you know, religion in Scotland was very diverse. There were ve many, many different branches of Christianity uh, being observed in Scotland at the time. You can see that a lot of these early censuses were very focused on religious denomination because they went to great lengths to record that accurately. Just a little bit of interesting, uh, interesting nugget of history there. Um, and yeah, so those are our Scottish records. As I mentioned, Miko is coming out in about two weeks to take a real deep dive. But I mean, my overall general tips for Scottish research would be apart from go to Scotland's people, uh, would be that, you know, there are many, there are Scottish records available to search on Find My Past. Don't forget that censuses from 1841 up to 1901, I believe, cover Scotland as well. So, uh, you know, you can make a fair bit of headway with Scottish research using censuses alone. We've also got a fantastic uh, newspaper coverage for Scotland. And, you know, we all know what a great record substitute newspapers can often be. So definitely look for your Scottish ancestors in the newspapers. Um, and apart from 
Scotland's people, uh, the, uh, the NRA Scotland website is also a great place to visit. That'll tell you about where you can find, you know, things like old parish registers, um, things like that. And another thing to remember actually about Scottish parish records, a fact I learned today was that they recorded deaths and burials to a much, to a far, what's the word, what I'm trying to More phrase More detailed? This. No, they, they, they weren't as hot as on, on recording deaths and burials as, they, as English parishes were. So when you come to Scottish parish records, you may find a birth, you may find a baptism and marriage and you may not find a burial because apparently burials weren't recorded as frequently as they were in, in England and Wales. As fastidiously. Fastidiously, that's, that's the word. You yes, might that's a great way. Uh, and, and again, for our for our viewers watching overseas, um, our British and Irish roots are a great place for finding your Scottish ancestors. Because, as many of you will be aware, the uh, the Scots were a very enterprising people and settled all over the show. So you have, you know, you you, you got big, you know, you had large Scot Scottish populations in North America, in Australia, in New Zealand pretty much all over the world. So do, sir, if you're, if you think you, if you, if you're living in North America or the Antipodes, uh, search our British and Irish roots and see if you can find whereabouts in Scotland your ancestors originally hailed from. Oh, and we've actually just said that Sharon Simmons is watching from Australia right now. Oh, wow. Hello, Sharon. Uh, I wonder also, what time it is. Oh, it's late, isn't it? It's too, <laughs> it's too late. It's too late for all this. A uh, really brilliant tip from um, uh, William Shaw actually it says Scottish records, the local libraries are brilliant. You can view school yes, records. Yes, fantastic tip. Thank up you, to William. The 50s with lots of pictures as well. Um, also, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second if that's right. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that have come through. I'm on, yeah, yeah, go for it. You ready? Yeah. So Gavin Rayner says, do you have an up to date UK map showing your parish register coverage? We have a map. <laughs> um, up to date, maybe not so, but. Do you know what? That is something we need to work on. We need an up-to-date map. Um, we... Then you've put me on the spot. I here. really have put you, you on really the spot, have. haven't I? Uh, we have a relatively up-to-date map, yes. Um, leave that so, with me. Yeah, what I do is I will share the most recent map that we have in the comments, and then we will uh, talk to our friendly, lovely in-house designers and see if they can um, update that. Do you know what? Thank... Who, who sent that in again? That was from uh, Gavin Rayner. <laughs> Thank you, Gavin. That is some, yeah, we, we needed prodding on that. We, uh, an updated parish map is long overdue. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get work. We'll, get, we'll make sure one is created. And you were talking Scotland. I know this is a very, very broad question, but Sue Kelly says, hello, I'm struggling with births in Wales. Okay. Any, any tips? Oh, gosh. Uh, it depends on what way you're struggling. Are you, are you still in the era of civil registration? Are you looking at parish records? I mean, apart from my general... Kind of cover all. I mean, obviously, we know the naming patterns can be an absolute nightmare for Wales, can't they? But we, it yeah. can also help you get to the bottom of some mysteries. So we've got a blog post on that, that I could share in the comments. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Share the blog in the comments. I mean, I, I know that this almost feels like cheap advice because I give it to everybody, but again, maybe try family notices in the newspapers if you really are struggling. Um, huh. uh, our fantastic colleague Niall, who you might recognise from a few weeks ago, has just shared with me, our most recent maps of our parish coverage, so I'll pop that in the comments as He's well. so quick. Stop making us look bad now. <laughs> uh, um, so, yeah. Uh, hope, uh, oh, and by I the way, it's, it's 12 minutes was. past 1 a.m. Oh. In, in Eastern Australia. Whoa! That is... Well, wow, I've, I've, thank you very much for tuning in. I, I'm I really hope. struggling to keep up with these comments. It's so good to see so many comments coming <laughs> through. I, I'm sorry if this feels a little bit all over the place and a bit hectic, but... Um, Shall I read out some of the questions of the weeks? Yes, if you could, if, if they're ones I haven't read out already. Uh, Willie, did you, you didn't read out William Shaw, our good friend William Shaws, did you? I did not, and then no. there's a brilliant one from Lynn Little as well down there, so, and also another one from Sharon Simons. Or William's something. great uncle, Charles Thomas Evans, married Audrey Victoria Greenfield in April 1939. Oh, so not that, oh, in Shanghai at the Holy City Cathedral. Apparently it was one of the biggest at the time, and they had a full page spread and separate section for the notices and photos, including the names of the children attending. Wow. I'd love to, um, apologies if this was in your email, <laughs> but I'd love to know what your uh, great uncle was doing in Shanghai. Um, yeah, that, that, that is, that's cool. Uh, and then Lynn Little, husband's uncle turned up suited and booted, ready to marry the love of his life. <laughs> Bride didn't turn up. You're making me nervous here, Lynn. You're making <laughs> me very nervous. Uh, but I found her 40 years later, only for her to say her dad said he saw 
uh, the uncle who said she uh, said he had changed his mind and both never married and died in their 80s never knowing the truth. Oh, that's sad. Well, well, I, I hope I hope my bride to be turns up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if not, Alex, we'll just go down the pub and have a drink. <laughs> yeah, if not, I'll marry Max. Um, <laughs> So Sharon Simmons, my great, great, great grandfather was African-American, born in Kentucky in 1824 and came to Australia around the mid 1850s. Wow. Yeah, that's that's not a common migration story. That's, yeah. Wow. That, that isn't his wife uh, was white from England and she came to Oz about the same time. They lived together had eight children before marrying in 1892. Wow. That does sound, that sounds almost like the thing you could write a book about. I'd love to know what their experiences were like, you know, being a mixed race couple in 1800s Australia. Um, well, 1800s anywhere. Wow, that, yeah, that is, that's a great one. Um, oh, by the way, we've just got a confirmation from Karen Harvey saying, uh, I am related to Lefebvre, a Huguenot fleeing Mao, married Amsterdam in 1690. That is cool. What a cool ancestor. Uh, yeah, um, re look him up in the newspapers. There's, there's quite a lot about him. And I was reading about him online. And he, I just love that whole era of piloting, you know, where they're all, you know, you, I mean, you had to be pretty daring to get in one of those paper mache uh, <laughs> death traps anyway. And one of the things I always find weird is that, so he was the first pilot to die, the first ever pilot to die in 1909. And then literally like five years later, they were having dog fights and shooting each other out. The, you know, in, this, in less than 10 years, you go from the first pilot dying to the likes of the Red Baron and... Billy Bishop and all that kind of stuff. It's just it's insane how quickly that technology advanced. Um, uh, Audrey says, brilliant comment here. How about producing an F&P colouring book that you can complete as new collections are added? Where we're talking <laughs> about the coverage. <laughs> That's it's quite a good idea. <laughs> but here's a quite serious one, and I'm not sure exactly what, if Chris is referring to the editor. So Chris said, what's happened to the page that used to be on the site showing a listing of all records? Can't find it now. Was accessed through FAQ. Is that the is that the list of A to Z? The A to Z list of records. No, I don't. Unless it's the special colour. No, I think I know what. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to have a look at that. I'm Chris, not... we'll have to get back to you on that one. Yeah. If. Yeah, we'll we'll speak to the customer support team, and I'll I'll speak to the product guys as well, and see if we can get to the bottom of that one. Um, Sylvia Valentine. Hello, Sylvia. Oh, no, you've read out Sylvia. Sylvia yeah, says it's one name. Not Sharon, Sharon Simons or Simmons. Sharon, you need to let us know if we're pronouncing your name correctly. I've read out Sharon's as well. Sharon's was the, the, the interesting Oz, uh, oh, yeah, African-American yeah. going over to Oz. Uh, and Anne David, who... Oh, no, again, I've answered all these. Sorry, I've, I've been all over the place today. It's because I got so excited in my new graphics. <laughs> I, I've actually had a request from Niles saying, can we do the graphics again? So I think we should finish on the graphics before we let you go. <laughs> Oh, and Andrew Davis said, let's hope Shropshire is better covered in the electoral registers. Your cover of Shropshire isn't great. I'm sorry to hear that, Andrew. We, it should be, because we do actually have a fairly well-fleshed-out collection of Shropshire Parish records. I don't know whether you might not have... I, I, well, if you... I, mean, I don't know if you've tried searching them yet. They're, they may, may be well hidden. You can get to them via our A to Z. So if you go to the A to Z of record search and type in Shropshire, uh, that will take you to our collection of Shropta Parish records, which by no means are complete, but in terms of coverage, as far as parish collections go, they're pretty good. Um, so that should hopefully be able to help. And I think that might be it. For yeah, we, we, we're, we're 33 minutes in. I think it's probably time that we let Ron go and have a lovely weekend. Yes. Uh, and obviously, as, as you can tell, I assume it works. I'm just desperate to, uh, to have my question of the week graphic again. Even though it's completely <laughs> unrelated. I just want to make sure it works because I wasn't sure why it didn't work the second time. So let me just try this again quickly. Yay! Question of the week! Oh, I forgot my veil. I oh, know that's for next time. Oh, oh, that's that... a surprise. Okay, sorry. Max, Max is always trying to get me in silly outfits. Right, okay. Really. Question of the week is working. We're going to add more to it. We'll make the confetti more confetti-like. Um, and yeah, please do um, make sure you join us next week. Uh, it will not be a live broadcast, no. but we are going to have Estelle and George for our search wizards Live in the indeed. comments, ready to answer your questions. Yes, and I will not, I'm not, Mac, neither Max or I are here next Friday because we're at my wedding, and then I'm off the following Friday because I'm on my honeymoon, and then I will be back 
with a vengeance in the last Friday of September. So yeah, I will see you all very soon. Joined by Miko. Joined remember. by Miko. Uh, and then, oh yeah, we've got so much to get through. And then after that, I think we'll have to get to the, um, the Ask the Expert questions that have been sent in. And if yes. any of you have any questions, anything at all that you think we might be able to help with, if, you, if it's longer, something we can't cover in this you know, short time, email it to ask the experts at findmypass.com and I'll put that in the comments and we will see if, well, let's do an Ask the Expert special. And, and, and I also want to say, yeah, uh, again, thanks to Phil for, uh, last week I did a shout out for suggestions for things, topics to cover in future videos because we don't want to cover the same ground. Um, so it was really, I was really grateful for Phil to send that in and it was just a happy coincidence that the, what, what Phil wanted to see was something we do have planned. Um, but the reason I wanted to mention that was if you do send an email in for me to the customer support team, it always gets forwarded on to me. I do see them. So don't be afraid to get in touch. We love to hear from you. Cool. Well, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Thanks so much. Take Have care. a lovely weekend. Lovely weekend. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, me too. Bye. Bye.